Hello everyone and welcome to this video about Microsoft Exam 70-345 which is called Designing and Deploying Exchange Server 2016. In this video I'm going to answer the questions, is Exchange Server Certification still worth it? What training materials are available, both free and paid, to help you prepare for the exam? And what type of training lab should you use for your exam preparation? I've also got a little offer for you at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around right to the end. Now, just quickly for those of us who have not already met, my name is Paul Cunningham and I'm a Microsoft MVP for Office Servers and Services, which is what they call us former Exchange Server MVPs these days. I'm a writer and trainer and I've been running the ExchangeServerPro.com website for over eight years now. So let's look at the first question. Is Exchange Server certification still worth it? After all, the cloud is big business these days and Office 365 is growing very fast. And although we'll never truly know the numbers behind it, it's safe to assume that on-premises Exchange servers are a slowly shrinking market. But let's reframe the question. Are Exchange Server skills still useful Office 365. After all, Exchange Online is a significant part of Office 365 and as Microsoft regularly reminds us, Exchange Online runs on the same code as on-premises Exchange servers. So let's break it down. Which Exchange Server 2016 skills are going to be useful for you when you're dealing with Exchange Online? Let's look at the exam objectives for Exchange 2016 and compare. The first objective is about Mailbox databases, and I'll be frank, it's only a little bit useful in terms of direct relationship to Office 365 and Exchange Online, but it is still quite useful to understand how Mailbox databases work, and that gives you some insight into how Exchange Online is working behind the scenes to maintain high availability for you. Similarly, with client access servers, it's only partially useful because a lot of the client access configuration in terms of servers and certificates and namespaces, that's all taken care of for you in Exchange Online, but you still get to learn about things like controlling client protocols, uh, Outlook Web App Mailbox policies, ActiveSync, and things like that. So there's still partially useful skills that you'll pick up from the on-premises topics for use in Exchange Online. Transport services is very similar. Again, Microsoft takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting for you, but you still need to understand things like DNS and MX records and how SPF and spam prevention work, and also a lot of the troubleshooting skills that you only learn when you become familiar with on-premises exchange servers. In terms of infrastructure recipients and security, this starts to get very useful. Now, Microsoft takes care of the Active Directory side of things in Exchange Online. You don't have to think about domain controllers and things like that. But managing recipients and managing security features like rights management is going to be the same whether you're on-premises or online. Again, with compliance, archiving, e-discovery and auditing, it's almost completely the same. All of those features work in both Exchange On-Premises and Exchange Online. So learning about them through Exchange 2016 certification is certainly one way you can go about doing that. And finally, coexistence, hybrid, migration, and federation. Well, it should be obvious that those are very useful topics because a lot of work in Office 365 is actually migrating to Office 365 and hybrid configurations are very, very common these days as well. So yes, in my opinion, Exchange skills are still overall very useful even for Office 365 customers. But even if you disagree with me on that point, I recommend you at least consider what your local job market is like. If you're still seeing lots of job advertisements that include Exchange Service Skills, then perhaps the local demand in your area still justifies keeping up your Exchange knowledge and your Exchange experience. So what training materials can you use to prepare for the exam? Now, one of the ways you can prepare really will cost you nothing at all but your time. You can do it for free if you're willing to go through the exam objectives that Microsoft publishes on the Microsoft Learning website and then go and find the relevant materials on TechNet. So you'd have to do a lot of Google or Bing searching to find those and then simply read those TechNet documents. 
Now the TechNet documents aren't always written entirely clearly. Sometimes they lack a little bit of context and nuance or they lack examples that make it more relevant to the real world. But you can certainly learn almost everything you need to know about Exchange just by reading TechNet. If you prefer books, I am a co-author of the exam reference for 70-345 and that's published by Microsoft Press. And you can find that on Amazon or the Microsoft Press Store or really anywhere you're used to buying your technical books. And if you prefer video training, again, I am the author of a six part training series on Pluralsight that covers each of the 70-345 exam objectives. As I'm recording this today, three of those courses are available for you to watch and all six of them should be completed by December this year. Now, no matter which way you decide to prepare, whether it's by reading TechNet documents, reading the exam reference book, or watching video training, it's useful to get hands-on with Exchange Server 2016 yourself as part of your preparation. So what type of lab environment can you set up to do that? The first point I want to make is that your training needs go beyond Exchange Server 2016. Microsoft is also about to release Windows Server 2016, so there's going to be lots of new things to learn about that operating system and the new Active Directory, the new Hyper-V and all those sort of things. So whatever training lab you can run, it should be useful for those other products as well. For the hardware that you'll be running virtual machines on for training purposes, the most important resources are going to be memory. So you can run several virtual machines at the same time and fast disks, preferably SSD drives. Now, even though Exchange itself is designed to run on lower cost disks in enterprise environments, the VMs that you run on your training equipment will tend to be quite low in their memory allocations. So they will benefit from having faster disks like SSDs hosting those VMs. Finally, consider whether you want a lab server that you tuck away under your desk or in your garage or, or whether you want something portable like a laptop that you can take with you wherever you go. And I'll also point out that cloud options are also available such as Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services, but it can get expensive very quickly if you're trying to run VMs in those cloud services, especially if you leave them turned on all the time. If you're going to build a server that will stay in your home, there's two options. Now, following Jeff Guillet's build guides is a great way to do this. Jeff publishes complete parts lists and guides for server builds that start at less than $1,000, which is a pretty good price for building a home server. And you can find out all those details on Jeff's website, which is expta.com slash server. Well, one of the other approaches that I've often used in the past is to renovate an old PC. You just take your old desktop, maybe an old gaming PC that you're not using anymore, you've replaced it with a new one, and just add some more memory and maybe some SSD drives for a few hundred dollars. And that gives you a server that you can put in your garage or under your desk and start running those VMs. If you want something more mobile, you'll need to look at a laptop. I have two laptops that I use for this. The first is my Lenovo Yoga 900. You can get those with core i5 or i7 processors and up to 16 gigabytes of memory, as well as up to a 512 gigabyte SSD drive. They've got a 13 inch touchscreen and they're really, really light and portable. I take that Yoga 900 with me on the road when I'm traveling, when I'm working out away from home. Very, very portable. It's a great machine. I've also got a Lenovo ThinkPad P50. This one mostly stays on my desk, although I have taken it with me on a few trips as well. It's got a Xeon processor, a lot more powerful, and it can host up to 64 gigabytes of memory, which is a huge amount to put in a laptop. It's also got more drive base, so you can fit heaps of storage in it. A larger screen, it is heavier, but it does have a great keyboard. All in all, it's a terrific machine if you don't need something quite as mobile and portable as the Yoga 900. So what can you squeeze into a lab server as far as running virtual machines go? A hard drive space is one factor, but let's assume you've got at least a few hundred gigabytes of disk space available and you're using dynamically growing virtual hard drives and you're otherwise just being sensible about how you allocate disk space to your VMs. That leaves memory as the real bottleneck to think about. Now, in my experience on a system with eight gigabytes of memory, it's going to take up about two gigabytes just for the host operating system. So the Windows 
server or Windows 10 that's running on the hardware itself. And that'll leave you with about two gigabytes to run a VM as a domain controller and about four gigabytes to use for your Exchange VM. You can still learn a lot about Exchange 2016 with just a single server like that, but obviously you're not going to be able to spend any time doing the high availability type stuff that needs more than one server. If you have a system with 16 gigabytes of memory, again, you'll lose two gigabytes to the host operating system and you'll allocate two gigabytes to your domain controller, but you can probably run two Exchange VMs quite comfortably, each with four gigabytes of memory and still have enough left over to run perhaps a Windows 7 or a Windows 10 VM to be your client so that you can also try out Outlook and any other client applications as well. If you can afford 32 gigabytes of memory or more, well, your options open up quite a lot larger. And this is where you can get into both high availability and site resilience. So in a system with 32 gigabytes of memory, I've been able to fit a Windows Server with the RAS role for basically acting as a router between two different subnets within the virtual lab, two domain controllers, four Exchange VMs, and also one or two client VMs and still have enough left over to run some virtual load balances as well. So you can pack quite a lot into a 32 gigabyte system. If you've got 64 gigabytes or even 128 in some cases, uh, as you'll see in one of Jeff's server builds, well, you're not going to run into any memory problems on a system like that. Now, I just want to finish with a special offer that I have for you. Because the really basic stuff like setting up Active Directory and installing the first Exchange server, those topics are not actually covered in the exam objectives and therefore they aren't covered in the book or the training courses in any great detail. So I'm making available for free my Exchange Server 2016 Quick Start Guide. And this short ebook will walk you through those basic setup tasks as well as setting up Hyper-V and creating your virtual machines so that you can get your training environment up and running and you can start your exam preparation. Everything you need to know about getting the free ebook as well as other information about preparing for exam 70-345 is available by following this bit.ly link, which I'll also put in the description below this video on YouTube if you're watching the video there. So please visit that link to find out more and while you're there, please leave a comment to let me know your plans for Exchange 2016 certification. And if you know other people who'd also be interested in this free ebook for their own training, uh, please share this with them on Facebook or LinkedIn so that they can grab their copy as well. So good luck with your Exchange 2016 certification.